everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for a new episode of A New Go of New Home Sales. I'm your host, Anya Christianthan, and joining me today is a good friend, Leah Turner. Leah is a rock star in new home sales industry. You may know her from her long tenure, 15 years, with Melinda Brody and company. She is a national sales coach and trainer to salespeople, and they do a ton of secret shop videos. So I always love talking to Leah about that because she has the best stories in the world. And she's also a licensed realtor with Berkshire Hathaway. So she definitely has both sides of the story. So welcome to the show, Leah. I am so very excited to have you on today's podcast. Well, thank you very much. And it's wonderful to see you again. It's been too long. So thank you for having me today. I appreciate it. Yes, it's always a pleasure to have, to see you in person or uh, virtually. So, Leah, for those listeners who may not know who you are, would you mind giving us an introduction of your story? How did you end up in the home building industry? Because I always love to hear those stories. It's never I will I don't I, I dreamt as a little girl to be in new home sales. So what, <laughs> what's your story been like? Right, you kind of fall into that, don't you? Well, I've spent the last. 30 years of my career, either in new home sales or in general real estate. I started in general real estate and worked in sales and training in that capacity, and then moved to Orlando and actually worked for a national builder. I'd always wanted to see that side of things. I met with Melinda Brody, I've known that company for 20 plus years. We use them as our video shoppers. So when I ventured and started my own company, um, it was a natural fit that I worked with them to do sales and training for new home sales specialists via the the video shops and the, the coaching that way. I also, as you mentioned, have my real estate license here with Berkshire Hathaway, Florida Properties Groups, and I focus on selling new home construction. So I, I kind of bring a lot of diversity in my background of being on both sides. And I've always really been passionate about seeing new home sales consultants and general realtors mixed together. There's been too often a little bit of a, a click between the two of them or a little hesitation. And it's really my passion to, you know, really show both of these groups how by working together, both parties can be super successful. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly going to be our topic for today. But before we get into it, Let's talk a little bit about the market. So Leah, what are you seeing in, in your local market? Now we're in the month of August, 2023. So right. what's happening? Well, we've seen a lot of changes from August 2022 to August 2023. That's for sure. Last year, June 2022, July 2022, things were crazy. So we have seen a little bit of a slow time, a little bit of a slowdown. I don't think as much in the new home construction side of things as in the general side. Obviously, there's a lack of inventory. Interest rates are always a challenge, et cetera. And the month of August just typically tends to be a little bit slower. You You've got people planning on going back, getting kids ready for school, taking that last minute vacation. So things tend to, and it's hot. Let's not forget that it's hot and people don't want to traipse around looking at homes all the time. So things tend to slow down a little bit here in, in August. And that's kind of what I'm hearing around the, the country, that it's a little bit slower. But that's why I think perfect timing for this topic. Things don't need to be slower if you kind of develop that relationship or partnership with your real estate advisors out there. So that's hopefully what we can talk to talk about today are some tips on how we don't have to necessarily slow down. We just maybe shift gears a little bit and focus our marketing and attention in different areas to keep that momentum going up. Because let's face it, people are always going to need homes, right? Um, I'm in the Florida marketplace and we have people moving here like crazy. So it's been real interesting. It's kind of been an up and down over the past 12 months, I'd say. Yeah. So Leah, I just came back from Jeff Shore's Sales and Marketing Summit in Nashville, and he had shown a graph of California market, which is actually very similar to national market. And it was oh. year over year sales trends. And so what you can see on that graph was every January, it starts off in an upward direction. The sales are going up. And then as we hit that August mark, 
it starts to go down until we yeah. get again to, to January and again it goes in and up. And then again in July, August, it goes down year over year. It was the same exact thing. So right. this is, again, if you've been in new home sales and general real estate for a while, you guys are all know that this is just what happens, right? Like August seems to be that month when we really notice it. Because right. like you said, everybody's taking those last vacations. It's back to school prep. So people are not really thinking about moving. They typically have settled already prior to. And so it's that slow decline up until they right. hit the new spring market. So yes. you have a unique perspective where you've been on new home sales site for builders you sell new homes now as a general real estate agent. So you experience both sides of the coin. But for most builders, I would say that it's a challenging relationship with real estate agents. It's more of a love-hate relationship. I would so agree. Let's first touch upon why is it so important to have relationships with real estate agents and is it every single agent that we need to engage with? So what's your take on that? Like well, I think that, and you hit it right, there is a, there has been a love-hate relationship between builders and realtors for a long time. Market slows down, and all of a sudden, the builders are courting the realtors. Market is great, and all of a sudden, the realtors, they don't necessarily think they need. So I think the number one takeaway is you've got to have a consistent relationship with the realtors. You can't be the fair-weathered friend. Um, I think we need to shift and start looking at realtors as our brand ambassadors to builders, developing those relationships, because let's face it, the people that are want to buy or sell a home, they're going, they're reaching out to the realtors. So our realtors, in a sense, um, are our clients, if you're a builder. So the kind of a, a paradigm shift in how we look at realtors and look at them as our client ambassadors and treat them as clients, because wouldn't it be easier to have one realtor that you have a great relationship with that brings you 10 deals a year? Right. So we, we need to kind of look, shift how we look at realtors and what role they play in our business. So I think the first thing is really to look at them as our brand ambassadors. If they have a great experience with you as a builder, as an on site, I can guarantee you they're going to tell their friends, they're going to tell everyone, hey, it's so easy to work with Anya. Take your customers over there. She's wonderful. But on the flip side, if they have a bad relationship with you or something happens, then the realtors talk. So so we want to be real cognizant of that fact and create a positive experience for our realtors and our builders and realize that at the end of the day, we both want the same goal, and that is to sell homes. So number one, look at them as your brand ambassador. And then the second thing I think that is so important is develop relationships, real relationships, one-on-one -on -one relationships. Don't just e-blast them to death. I mean, I know I get now that I'm on the real estate side actively, I can't tell you the number of e-blasts that I get daily from sometimes multiple times a day from builders. It just gets lost in the shuffle. So I think it's much more important to really rely on the old school way of developing relationships. Maybe take a look in your community and pinpoint who your top 10 or top 15 realtors are and start working on developing one-on-one -on -one relationships versus just blasting these e emails out to the masses that really kind of just get lost in the shuffle because it truly is about building those relationships. Yes, I love that. It is, it suddenly becomes so important when the traffic dries up. So, but I, I hear you about the blasts. I've been on that side of real estate uh, as I sold uh, myself. And I do remember getting just email after email and after a while, you just start deleting. Delete. Delete. Exactly. But if you look at your, your agents, like one of the things that I would suggest when you're talking about um, building a realtor outreach program, because I think it's very important for every onsite to have a written down realtor outreach program. What are you doing on a regular basis to engage, to develop those relationships? And if you can narrow it down to the top 10, 15 agents that are, are selling in your area and develop those one-on-one -on -one relationships, have luncheons, have, I encourage my builders to at least once a week do some type of a 
outreach, whether it's, hey, let's take this realtor to lunch. Maybe it's, hey, I'm going to invite a, a very successful real estate team to come over on Tuesday and preview the model. Or maybe it's reaching out to the management team and saying, hey, I'll host a sales meeting in my office, but making it really about face-to-face -face time and getting away from that social media piece. Engage them, get them to know you. I think that's the most important important thing we can stress here. Then if I'm on site and I need help with something, I can go, you know what? I'm going to call Anya. I want to brainstorm with Anya. Why is this house not moving? Or what can we do differently from a marketing perspective? Now I'm calling you and developing a relationship with you versus let's just shoot out an e-blast that nobody's going to read. So try in your realtor outreach program, whether it's phone calls or inviting people to come to your sales office or going to the sales meetings or something like that, but have some type of a personal touch with your realtors. The other thing, and you're the queen of this, Anya, because you are so good at social media, but I like to say it, help them help you, right? So people, general realtors are always looking for social media content. Invite them to come out to your sales office, take video. One of the best realtor events that I went to a couple of years ago was a grand opening of a community. They invited the top of the notch real estate agents to come out from all different brokerages. Uh, of course, you had the, the wine and cheese and all of that preview the community, but they did hair and makeup and they did headshots and they did video. So you had a little bit of a script. Hey, it's Leah Turner. Welcome to such and such. So now imagine the next day, all that content being pushed out. Number one, you're given the realtors content. And this is really good if they're new realtors and maybe don't have that experience, but you're, show, you're giving them contact. They're showing you love. So, so look at how you can help them better their business. And that's going to come back to you immensely. By helping I them. I love that idea. I mean, as a content creator myself, mm -hmm. I always look for opportunities for that video shoot, for the photo shoot. My friends, even my uh, work friends who travel with me know this about me. If I see some opportunity, I never miss it. So realtors are the same way. They're right. They're constantly looking for great opportunity to show up on social media and they want to show up in the best possible way. So help them elevate their brand by giving them access to your model home. That's a, such an amazing idea. I mean, just invite them to have a photo shoot. It's a beautiful model. They right. love that space. So I absolutely love that idea. And the hair and makeup, I mean, that's just extra. They loved it. And then they, and a new headshot. I mean, yes, we, we all know the, we know memes, the realtors. Right? that have the headshots from 1983 and the glamour shots with the big boa. So go out and get a new headshot. Do Give them something that they can go, yeah, this is great stuff. Include them in those things. I think we need to really look at our realtors as our partners. They're our secret weapon. And when you talk about when times get slow, they're the people are still buying homes in August. People are, they are. And who's going to, where are they going to go first is probably to the realtors. So, so have that type of a relationship with them. The other thing that I think is important and include them for focus groups. I was working with a builder a couple of years ago. We were launching a new community and we wanted input on pricing, product, promotion, amenities, et cetera. We invited like 20 realtors, had a dinner for them, previewed everything with them, got some valuable input on floor plans. It was, it's amazing that they see things through a different lens. They, they're dealing with these buyers all the time. And what's even more important, we kind of targeted these guys to be our VIP realtors for when we did launch this community, make them feel special. They have a lot of input. They have a lot of knowledge, include them on things like that and, and make them feel like they're part of your team. So focus groups that are a great opportunity, appreciation luncheons. We just actually hosted an open house for a, one of our builder partners last week and had about 40 people come out there, lots of social media. The next day, the, Facebook was blowing up and this builder was like, oh my goodness. So, but they loved doing it and they loved coming out there and, and who can resist looking at a gorgeous model and, and just being a part of all of that. So I think we just need to look at them that way. Look at other ways. If you're starting to develop relationships, again, don't toss the net out into the sea of a gajillion realtors. You're always going to have that realtor who's been around since 1902, shows up at every open house, eats all the food, but hasn't sold anything since 1903. So why don't we really focus on who's doing the business? And quite frankly, the ones that are doing the business 
are, are busy. So they're not necessarily going to go to your open house or your breakfast meeting, what have you. So really define who it is that you're working towards and make sure that there are agents that are active in that community, that you, you drive the community. Who's doing all the resales? Look at the signage. Those are the people you want to start to develop the relationships with. I love the idea of a focus group. I don't think many builders do that. And think about you're so close to your own product sometimes that you can't even see the other side of it. So I love the idea of getting feedback on the floor plans, just yes. the, the price points, right? Like they know exactly what the sweet spot is for that community, for that area for people they know exactly what type of features people are looking for yes what the points are so that is an excellent idea if i was selling again i would absolutely incorporate a focus group with realtors before every single launch I mean, yeah looking at, at a new go you know with our app on newgo.com we are about to launch a realtor portal where realtors can go in and easily find new construction and engage with their clients so we have our own focus group of realtors who are testing this for us, giving us feedback. So it makes sense, right? Yeah. Yeah. And and one of my points was going to be make it easy for them. If you're a builder, make it easy. Put your inventory homes on the MLS. Be very clear what your procuring cause agreement is, the registration process. That is an area that, that can be very dangerous, as we both know, but make it clear, help make it easy. So is it through your OSC? Do they call someone? Do they have to be there? It's so different. And I hear horror stories from realtors who feel as though they've been cheated out of a deal. Well, that story goes on and on. So, you know, it, it, it's okay if you have to have them bring their person in there, but just make it clear so there's no gray areas. And that goes back to the communication, letting them know, but, but make it easy for them too. don't make them have to jump through hurdles to bring people into your office. Because I tell you, if, if they have a good experience with you, they're going to come back because they know it's easy to do business with her. There were no issues with commission. There were no issues with pro- procuring cause. I'm going to come to you because let's face it, if we make it easy, it's a win on both sides. So let's not try to push them back. Let's welcome them and see how we can work with them. When they bring your buyers, their buyers into your sales office, make the realtor the hero. Oh my gosh, it's Anya again. She's a rock star. You're in great hands with her. Okay, now I look like the hero because oftentimes I think if you're not, if the general agent is not trained on how to deal with builders, They sometimes come in there very defensively. You can't negotiate and you can't sell a new home construction the same way you do general real estate. So another good point to get to know your agents and and here's how we work. When you come in, if you want to come in beforehand, before you bring your client in, we can sit down and go through everything, but I'm going to make you look like the rock star and you don't need to worry about it because I think sometimes our realtors go, well, gosh, if I take them to new home construction, am I really earning my commission because the onsite's doing so much. There's that mental block, but if you get to get to know your onsite and here's how we work together and here's what we can negotiate on and here's what we can't negotiate on. There's nothing more embarrassing in my opinion than a realtor that does not know how to work new construction and goes in and treats it the same way as general real estate and start negotiating and being really defensive and pushy. That's not going to win for anybody, right? It's a whole different sales process. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, what you mentioned about the commission and being very clear about the process and the procuring cause, like that is, I've heard so many horror stories. And I think in your last newsletter, uh, Under the Ugly, you had a story of a girl calling in saying, hey, I'm going to send my client over. They registered, the client came in, signed the contract, and the realtor was left out of it because they were, quote unquote, not present where they send the client to you this is such a bad move because now this realtor is going to be better for life and they will tell all of their uh, colleagues at work not to send their clients to you so you just single-handedly ruin the entire relationship with that entire brokerage i know i know don't miss the forest for the tree, right? And just that's why have a consistent program, whatever that program is, be consistent with it and share what it looks like. 
and then it'll be okay. And then also, once you start to develop these things, there are ways you can co-market with your real estate community. If you've got inventory homes and want a, a realtor to throw an open house for you, why not co-host uh, an open house with a realtor? I know in, in some cases in, in our market, we're talking to some builders about doing some model mining for them. If the on-site, they get two days off. So if you've got good relationships with realtors, perhaps there's some model mining opportunities. The other thing is oftentimes when people come in to buy new home construction, they have a house to sell, correct? So what if you have, here's a list of three of the, the realtors that are pretty much dominate this community. There are ways to co-market and present it as a partnership um, that benefits both sides, the realtor and the, the new home sales associate, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I think that is a really easy way to develop a relationship with top realtors that you're trying to go after. Like you said, they are busy. They're not going to be the ones that are going to showing up for a free lunch. But right. if you position it like, hey, most of our uh, buyers are up buyer, up moving up buyers. So they do have house to sell typically when we see them. Why don't I refer you? clients who don't have a realtor attached to them already. I mean, that's right. a, such an easy yes, right? Like, exactly, easy, easy exactly. And it goes a long way. And, and another thing that I hear oftentimes too from the general real estate side is they're sometimes hesitant to sell new home construction because of the 12, 14 month, however long it is, if it's a to be built home, they don't get paid, you know, that whole rigmarole. One of the things that I'm starting to see builders do here, smart builders are going, you know what, if that's a challenge, then maybe on our to be built, we pay half at slab or something like that, you, you know, make it easy for the the real estate agent to want to show your property and you've got inventory homes, obviously they're going to show that because it's a 30, 45 day close. But sometimes with the two B bills, take a look at the commission structure. Can, is there some flexibility? Can you put pay half at slab? And as opposed to making somebody wait 13, 14 months or whatever that is. So I think a lot of it is this market's been a, a roller coaster, as you said earlier. Um, it's really time to think outside of the box on how we work with our real estate agents. I've been in the market a long time and I know when in 2006, 2007, when things were crazy right before the, the, the downfall uh, and people were selling like left and right. And a lot of big guy production builders quit giving realtors commission entirely or it was a $500 commission, regardless of the price of the home. That's what I'm saying. Don't cut your nose off to spite your face because realtors have a long memory. Whatever your program is, be consistent with it. Make sure that your on-sites know what it is and communicate that and develop your A-team of people that you can call on and work together as partners, real estate partners in, in the process. And, and make sure your stuff is on MLS because I think too, most general realtors, if they're working with a buyer, the first thing they're going to do is go to the MLS. They don't necessarily always think new home construction unless the buyer says, I only want new home construction. So have a presence there. Um, if you've got inventory homes, instead of doing the dramatic e-blast to 10 gajillion people, pick up the phone. Hey, Anya, we've got one that's going to be ready in um, September. I know you work with a lot of different buyers. This is a you know, four bedroom. It would be great for a family. Whatever that is, now it's a personal relationship and I'm not just going inventory home available. Now you can go, hmm, you know what? I was working with the Smiths last week. This might work out well for them. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know it's painful for builders to send their dead leads to realtors, but again, that could be a great trade-off, right? If it's a truly dead lead when they say like, there's no way I'm going to buy your home. This community is not right for me. Like most of us still keep it in the backlog and keep bombarding them with more emails, yes. more emails to the point where it's like, no, you know, <laughs> so if it's truly done deal, then Maybe, especially again, if they are not working with their real estate agent already, make that right. introduction so that they could potentially take over that relationship. And again, that's about reciprocity, right? You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Yes. So yeah. It, it's a huge opportunity to it to is and, and remember that realtors have a wide spread so let's say you have an inventory home and if you try to do an open house you're you're 
you've got your sphere of influence, but a realtor can market that not only through the MLS, but through the brokerage, through multiple different websites. So they're going to be attracting people that you might not have ever attracted. So you're getting not a, it benefits you because you're getting all these new people coming to your community. Only one person can buy that open house, but they may be in the market for a to be built or something else that's there. So again, just thinking outside of the box on how can we get drive traffic? Because I think that's, I talked to new home salespeople and you do too. The traffic, we want traffic. So maybe you as a realtor could go to a community that isn't getting a whole lot of traffic and say, hey, here's what I'd like to do to help you bring traffic to the community. What's, what I'm hearing is coming back, which has been gone since like before COVID, are the caravans. Remember how realtors in the old days would do the, we're driving around, we're going to yeah. go to all of these homes. That, that kind of went away when COVID came, obviously, and, and I can certainly understand why. But that that's now coming back. So, hey, I'd like to, I'll, I'll provide breakfast if you bring your gang here on the caravan. So just exposure, engage your realtors, and really don't forget that it's all about relationships. It truly is. So Leah, one thing I want to touch upon is communication, which you've already mentioned. So it can be difficult for realtors to bring a client and give, I don't want to say give up that relationship because once they're under contract and then you're right, it could be six, nine months plus until that house is finished. Oftentimes what ends up happening is crickets. We as salespeople don't communicate for the realtor because now we're communicating with the client and then a uh, realtor is not really involved until they show up to settlement. And mm -hmm. it can be kind of an awkward situation, especially if things have gone wrong in the process. They feel like they're left out of the loop. They're not sure the client is not happy at the end. And right. it's just a big mess. So from your experience, what have you seen builders do in order to keep a realtor in, in the communication, whether it's just an old fashioned phone calls, I've seen there's lots of different apps out there that you can keep progress updates to a customer and include a realtor on that. So talk to us about some of the best practices for keeping realtors up to date, involved throughout that construction process. That's a great question, Anya. And I, I wish more new home salespeople would think that way because it, it really depends on the realtor. So in some cases, you might have a realtor. If I've worked with Anya before, hey, you know what, Anya? Uh, here are my clients. You're entrusted with them. I know that you're going to communicate well with them. So don't worry. Let me know if there's an issue, but I'm going to hand them over to you in a way. Now, some realtors will do that. On the flip side, you have other realtors that say, you know what? I want to be involved in everything. I want to go on the walks with them. I want to be part of all of these different meetings, but have that conversation, I think, with the, the new home specialist initially or the realtor initially and find out what they what their comfort zone is. Some of them are going to want to come out every week if they want to take pictures or video to show that they're show that they're buyers who live in New York. Some of them you may not see until closing, and that's fine. It really, I think it's it's a conversation to say, what do you feel comfortable with? Not forgetting that. The realtor brought that buyer in. So there is a sort of a, this is my person, right? But in some cases, again, they may go, hey, I, I, the baton is being handed to you. Just let me know if there's a huge issue or if there are any changes, or they may take a little more ownership of it and say, you know what, I do want to be in the loop and I do want a, a weekly report and that's okay, right? So just, I would say, find out what their level of comfort is. If it's the first time they've done a transaction with the builder, they may be a little bit more involved. If it's, if I've been doing business with you for the past 10 deals and I feel comfortable with it, I may not want to be as involved. So it really does depend on the level of comfort that they have with you and what that realtor wants their buyers to see. Because like I said before, a lot of times they're hesitant to sell new home construction because they feel like, did I really earn my commission? I basically just brought this person over here. I need to prove that I'm still involved. And, uh, and one of the things, and I know you know this, Kimberly Mackey and I are both with Berkshire Hathaway and that we've got that new home sales specialist training program, which she's been doing for years. And what's so wonderful about that program and some of the additional training that we do with our realtors is we explain that process to them. We explain the differences in working with 
um, general real estate, where you can negotiate with new home construction, what that construction process looks like, um, and, and also letting them know, hey, the first couple of months, don't be surprised if you don't hear from your on-site, because here's what's happening behind the scenes. There's permitting, all of these things. So then once you do hear from them, it starts to pick up a little bit more. So I think the onus is on the, the real estate agent to explain to their buyers if they've not bought new construction before, what that process looks like, what to expect each step of the way, what different walks will have, what it looks like when you go to the design center, what closing looks like, why it's important maybe to work with the builder's preferred lender, because that's the you know, all they do day and night is new home construction loans. So I, we've really got to be ambassadors and we've got to be, we've got to understand that process. So, and if you don't understand that process, or if you haven't had the opportunity opportunity for training, ask an on-site, hey, would you mind if I just shadowed you, listen to you, how you explain that process so that you become, the real estate agent becomes a more valuable asset, not only to the builder, because now they understand the process, but also to their buyers as well. Yeah, love that. So yeah, it's, it certainly depends on the realtor, but be sure to ask because yes. you, know, you assume they just want to be hands-on and they're one of those type A personalities that's control freak. They're going to get mad. Yeah. They're, going to be <laughs> they're going to get very mad. Have that conversation because in most cases in, in a perfect world, the builder is typically or the on-site is typically communicating with their buyers on a weekly basis, even if it's just, hey, I'm just touching base just so that it doesn't get lost in the, the big black hole. And the on-site should say, hey, Anya, since you're the realtor that I'm working with, how do you want to be best communicated? Here's my process for communicating with buyers. Would you like me to copy you on those things? Do you want to be a part of the meeting? At least give them that opportunity to, to understand how you typically communicate with your buyers and how they want to be communicated with as well. Absolutely. And uh, as I mentioned, there are so many tech innovations these days that make it easy. So if you guys are not using anything, check out My Home Story. Christy Allen is a rock star behind the home that the house that she built. She was the project manager on that house. If you guys heard the story, hopefully the house that she built in Utah. So Christy Allen is the founder of My Home Story, which is basically an app that allows you to take easy pictures throughout the process. And it creates automatic website for the buyer wow. that keeps them up to date on all the progress and everything. So it's a wonderful way to keep them involved, keep them informed, and it creates a great marketing material that the buyers can share with their entire network on social media to yeah. show it off. So it's yeah. definitely something to check out. But you know, again, if you just do the old fashioned photos on your phone, emails, calls, whatever it is, just make sure you do it and ask them right. if they want to be involved. Exactly. Um, and the, the, their preferred way of communication and how often you want to be communicated with, because some, some even buyers are going to be like, just call me, you know, closer to the time. And then other buyers are going, what's happening today? When's this happening? So it really just kind of depends on the personality and the behaviors and what they want to know. But the realtor does need to be the lead liaison. But like I said, I've seen that they get real comfortable with working with the on sites. They're more of a team. Hey, and I'm almost handing you off to my teammate, Anya, who has been selling homes and building homes for this community and then I think that's that there's a strong presence when you're going in as a team right yes. so she she's going to be up to date I'm going to be also working with her and it just it's just how you frame it but the, the key being like I said bridging the gap between general real estate and new home construction that's always been a gap there's always been challenges and I think now as you touched upon with all these new technologies and everything out there I don't think it needs to be that way anymore I think we can help as new home sales associates to feed our pipeline by having these consistent relationships with realtors and to the point where we're comfortable oh my gosh this home just fell through I know there's a realtor here and locally and she's the queen of social media and a very hot community right now and if there's a home that falls through, it's on her private Facebook account to realtors. Anybody got anybody? This one fell through and it's gone in 2.2 seconds. But she's worked very hard to develop those relationships. And I think it's a win. So I think that if everybody kind of looks at it from a we're all on the same side, we all have the same goal. We want to sell more homes. How can go into if you are a new home specialist or new home salesperson, ask the realtors, what can I do for you? 
How can I help you? And general realtors, when you're meeting with your on-sites, find out about the community. Who are you looking for? How can I help you? I work with the relocation department. We get a lot of people coming in from out of state that need quick, ready, move-in homes. Well, I happen to have a lot of inventory. Have those conversations and you'll find kind of like the secret sauce or whatever. Okay, now I know this about Anya. She works with a lot of relocation buyers. So if I've got something coming up that's going to be ready in three months, I might call you because you're working with people coming in, looking at properties, wanting a three-month window or what have you. But each case is individual. That's why it's so important to take the time to build those relationships. Yes, I agree with you. So I think at the end of the day, it does come down to those personal relationships Uh, I mean, again, you guys know I love the technology, but it does come down to relationships. Ideal case scenario is, like you said, that team feel where you're handing off your client, I'm taking over, and you know that I'm going to take great care of them and you have nothing to worry about, right? That's the situation. So, Leah, thank you so very much for giving us some great ideas on how to get those relationships going with our general real estate agents so that we're not sitting there twirling your thumbs wondering right where do I get my next sale right or praying please let somebody walk in the sales office I hope somebody I hope I get a buyer today be proactive reach out to them build those relationships it will absolutely increase your sales it absolutely will Yes. So as we wrap things up, Leah, is there anything that we didn't talk about, we didn't mention that you think is worth mentioning? I think we covered a ton. I think back to the just one final note on realtor outreach, writing it down. Like when I work with builders, we we look at we've got our prospects, we've got our buyers and we've got our realtors and I've got a marketing plan for each one. And that includes, am I got, how many phone calls am I going to make? How many um, events am I going to have one a quarter? How, uh, how many times am I going to invite somebody to come over and do a catered lunch for the Berkshire Hathaway team? Have that plan in place and see, watch it, see how many more leads and how many more sales you're getting from the realtors and then, and be appreciative of your realtors. They work hard. I, I've been on both sides and both jobs are not not, they're not easy. Everyone thinks it's so easy. You're going to make a ton of money. It's hard work. So be appreciative of your realtors and thank them. They love that. I know one person that every time this new home associate, if a realtor sells the home for them, she goes to the real estate office the next day, puts balloons on the chair, a big basket. Thank you. So when the realtor walks in, she's like, whoa, I'm a rock star, right? So, so be appreciative and really build those relationships and have a plan in place for your realtor outreach. It will definitely increase your sales. Yes, it's not as easy as they make it look on sun, selling sunsets. No, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> not. Just glamour, so. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was that easy. If it was, we'd all be doing it. It, it, yeah. it absolutely is a tough job and a lot of time. And just be appreciative of both sides because both sides are working for the same end goal. And working together is always better than than having that clash with the onsite. You're a team and the goal is to get our buyer into their new home. Yes. Now, Leah, please plug in Melinda Brody and Company, your own thing. So if you guys are watching this, listening to this, and you're like, yes, I love Leah. I would love her to give me feedback on my salespeople. Guess what? Melinda Brody and Company, they do video Yes, Shoot video shopping. mystery shopping. The they've been doing it for Let's over thirty. Uh, Melinda Brody and Company has been in business over 35 years and they do the video mystery shopping, which is when somebody comes into your sales office and somewhere strategically on their body is a camera. So they video shop the entire process. Then it goes back to our in-house team to be scored. And a lot of salespeople are very hesitant about this, but I always go, look, this is your opportunity to see yourself in action, to see what you do well. How who, Who gets an opportunity to really see what they look like when they're in action? So we use those video shops as a benchmark for salespeople. I use the data in the video shops to come up with unique training programs because I can look at if a builder has done their team of 10 people, I look at all of the scores and I'll see, okay, you know what? This group totally knows how to do qualifying and discovery, but they might need some help in closing and overcoming objections. So we're able to put a program together. I do one-on-one coaching with the salespeople 
people. We go through the video shop. We look at the things they do well. We look at areas where they might need improving. So it's a very valuable tool and builders. It's basically the premium benchmark in training for the new homes community. So it's a valuable tool. If you want to learn more about that, go to melindabrody.com and there's tons of great information on there or reach out to me. I'm happy to share any of that information, but I'm very proud of that affiliation and I'm proud of what the company does. And I think it's made a big difference in the level of expertise of our new home salespeople because it is a valuable training tool. So thank you for asking for that little plug. Yes, and of course, we're going to have our webinar in September where we will share the benchmark from a ton of different builders for yes. 2022 so you guys can see where the trends are, what people are doing well, what they're not doing great, so that we can learn from that and improve. And Lee, if somebody wants to connect with you personally, where do you spend your time? Is it on social media? What's the email address? Tell us where we can connect. With you. They can reach me on email, Leah Turner, TTC at gmail.com or find me on Facebook. I love to connect on Facebook. Uh, if you like cows, you'll like me even more because I have <laughs> cows. <laughs> so look, for me, Leah Turner, Leah Povey Turner on Facebook, LinkedIn, through the, go to the Melinda Brody website. There's an opportunity to sign up for our monthly newsletter called Sales Tips and Clips, which Anya referenced a little bit earlier, where we share different things we've seen on video shops, different training tips, education tips. I, I write a segment called the good, the bad, the ugly, and that's really things I've seen on video shopping tapes. And we can't make this up. You're going to look at some of these stories and go, you've got to be kidding me. But uh, I wish I was, but we see, we've seen it all out there. So I would love for them to sign up for the newsletter. Uh, feel free to reach out on uh, any questions that they may have. I'd be happy to talk with anyone. Well, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure as always to have you on the show. And I hope, obviously, we're going to see you very soon again in September. I'll let you guys know when Leah is going to be back sharing more information with us to help us all improve. So thank you again for being on today's show and talk to you very soon. Thank you, Anya. Thank you. Bye.